Down at the Senior Bowl, I fell in love with Dak Prescott and the potential of what someday could be with fine tuning and proper coaching. Never during the week-long event did Prescott look overwhelmed or unable to digest the on-the-fly adjustments and quick pace his coaches threw at him. On top of that, Prescott made quick decisions and threw the ball with pinpoint accuracy on his short and intermediate throws, looking like a Russell Wilson-like clone with his short stature and ability to quickly shuffle around and escape the pocket, proved by his 10 rushing touchdowns in 2015 at Mississippi State. But why you should love Prescott as your fantasy dynasty keeper is his landing spot. That's right, Prescott finds himself in Dallas where he will sit behind an often injured Tony Romo who at 36 years old has been unable to play a full 16 games in the last three years. While he may not have the big name pedigree or collegiate career as some of the others on this list, Prescott has the tools to succeed in the NFL with similar attributes to a guy like Russell Wilson and the supporting cast around him like Des Bryant and the best offensive line in football. While entering the league at 24 years old, inexperience is something you wouldn't think would be an issue with Jones, but such is the case as he only started a handful of games at Ohio State before declaring for the NFL Draft. Jones was a roller coaster in his stint, with the Buckeyes leading them through the Big Ten Championship and eventually winning it all two games later, but inconsistencies plagued his 2015 season before being benched after a blowout loss to Penn State. Regardless of his play, though, Jones displayed a cannon arm that can make all the NFL throws to go along with a surprisingly athletic mobility for a quarterback and essentially a linebacker's body at 6 foot 5, 253 pounds. Jones is a huge wild card and a raw piece of clay, but if given proper guidance and coaching along with the right opportunity, then Jones has all the tools to be a playmaking quarterback that could put up monster fantasy numbers with both his arm and feet in the NFL. While you could argue nobody improved their draft stock more than Wentz, who started the pre-draft process as a possible day two pick and ended up as the number two overall selection in the entire draft. Wentz will start by sitting behind Sam Bradford, which is what I always hope for for any young signal caller as he can get a chance to learn the speed and nuances of the NFL, but it's even more important for Wentz as he's coming from a D2 program at North Dakota State. While I think the Andrew Luck comparisons were a bit far-fetched, I do see a franchise quarterback arm and big and ideal frame, an incredible sneaky running ability to gash opposing defenses. It should only be a matter of time before he replaces Bradford during the 2016 season. Hey, I may be in the minority on this one, but after watching the tape and seeing his landing spot, give me the upside of the six foot seven inch packs that Lynch over a guy like Carson Wentz. He's going to have the best and clearest path to starting from week one, given every opportunity to win the starting job fresh out of training camp. On top of that, he's got two of the best weapons in the game, with Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, who will offer the rookie reliable weapons in both the short and deep part of the field. I like Lynch as a dynasty keeper, I do, but in just the 2016 season alone, of all the rookie quarterbacks, Lynch is far and away most likely to put up the best numbers based on his path to playing and surrounding talent. Watch the tape and you'll see in Jared Goff, a quarterback who showed excellent accuracy to all levels of the field and an ability to manipulate defenders, throwing his receivers open to windows that simply weren't there. Most impressive for me, however, was Goff's upstanding pocket presence. No, he's not going to be a scrambler or a dual threat in the NFL, but a subtle slice in maneuverability from left to right in the pocket is something you just can't teach. And similar to signal callers like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, that pocket awareness and ability to feel pressure around them will buy a passer that extra second of time, which is critical in the NFL. As good as he could be, though, like most rookie quarterbacks, I wouldn't expect much from Goff in the 2016 season, as the game plan will likely involve a heavy dose of handing the ball off to running back Todd Gurley. But 
Once the team can find Goff some legitimate weapons in the passing game, Goff has the best chance to be the most consistent and put up the biggest numbers three, five, and even ten years down the road, which is why you should be your number one quarterback heading into your dynasty fantasy football season. Stay tuned and check back as I break down running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends, and which new NFL rookies you should land in your upcoming fantasy football drafts. For eDraft.com, I'm Luke Inman, signing out.